What is up guys, I'm Ishan Sharma and today I will be showing you my pathfinding AI and maze solver project in Python. This is how my project looks. In the options menu we have mainly 4 options. First is to select the starting point, then select obstacles, then select destination and a go button to give the result. I will select the starting point. It appears in yellow color. Then I will select the obstacles. Now I will select the destination. You can see that the code gave the shortest part between the two points, but it can also solve mazes. Let me show you how. I have already stored a maze in the code and it can be displayed using the tutorial button. As usual, I will select the starting point, then select the destination and click on go. You can see that solution appears in blue color. It is the correct and shortest path towards the destination. Now take a look at some more examples. You can find this project on my github account, link in the description. My project is based on Dijkstra algorithm. I divided my project into three main scripts. The first script generates an adjacency matrix. The second script imports the first script and applies Dijkstra algorithm logic on the generated matrix. And the third script imports the second script and gives a graphical user interface to our project. For those of you who don't know what is an adjacency matrix, it is basically a 2D matrix which tells whether a vertex in a graph is adjacent to another vertex or not. As you can see here that 0 is adjacent to 2 and 1. In the table of 0, you can see that 0 have a value of 0 and 3 have a value of 0. But 1 and 2 have a value of 1, 1 because they are directly adjacent to 0. Similarly, we have to create an adjacency matrix for 400 vertices where 0 is the first vertex and 399 is the last vertex of the graph. Now we are in the adjacency matrix generator script. In this part of the script, we initialize the adjacency matrix. And in this part of the script, we construct the adjacency matrix by calling the relation function defined above. The relation function returns 0 or 1 if the two vert vertices are adjacent or not. For the relation function to work, we must first find the relation between a vertex and its adjacent vertices. Here we can see that 24 is adjacent to 4, 25, 44 and 23. We can reach 4 by decreasing 20 and reach 44 by increasing 20 and reach 25 by increasing 1 and reach 23 by decreasing 1. So this relation can be used to determine whether two vertices are adjacent or not. For the first column vertices, we should not check for the left adjacent vertex and for the right column vertices, we should not check for the right adjacent vertex. In the relation function, 
in the first if condition we check in the first if condition we check whether the vertices are same or not and in the second if condition we check whether they are not from the first or the last column if they are not from the first and the last column we check whether they are adjacent or not if they are an adjacent we will return 1 and if they are not adjacent we will return 0 similarly this is done for the first column and second column so this is how we get the adjacency matrix and this function is called from the backend script that returns adjacency matrix and the size now we are in the backend.py script first we import adjacency matrix generator you can see that the whole code is written in a function named backend in which we receive source variable, obstacle list and destination variable from the GUI script. First we create a 2D graph and a size variable which stores the adjacency matrix and size written from the previous function, previous script. Now we create a parent list in which every vertex keeps tracks of its parent vertex. Next in the for loop we get every obstacle from the list. Then we break the connection of every obstacle with rest of the matrix. Then we initialize another list called dist which stores the distance with respect to the source. And then we create a list called sp set which is a boolean list which tells whether a vertex is already selected or covers along the path. First we keep distance source equal to 0 and parent source equal to minus 1. Then run a for loop from 0 to size minus 1. In the for loop we create a variable called u and returns a value in u from the function minimum distance in which we pass the parameter dist and sp set. It returns the minimum distance adjacent vertex. This function choose a vertex from a set of vertices connected to parent vertex and returns minimum index of the child vertex. Now sp set u is made true that means this vertex is reached along the path now we will run a for loop from 0 to size and in this if condition we find all the vertices connected to the selected vertex u and if we found one and if this condition is true then distance v will store the distance from the source and parent v will store the value of u now the ancestor function will find the path from source to destination it does so by finding the parent of the child and then finding the parent of the parent until the source is reached whose value is minus 1. List 1 stores the path information or parent information of the destination and then it is returned. Now destination parent store the path towards the destination in the form of parent list and then it is returned. Now I am in the final script. First I will import tkinter and then backend. You can see that here also I have written the whole code inside a function and later the function is called. Here is some basic tkinter stuff. Then I have created a count variable for identifying each vertex or button and passing unique parameters. Then I have created a button list which stores button created during the runtime. Then I will create a variable supply mode that will help us from differentiating between different inputs like starting point, ending point and obstacles. After that I will create a source variable that will store the starting point and then I will create an obstacle list that will store the obstacles when the supply mode is 2. After that I will create a dest variable that will store the final destination. 
the start button obstacle button and destination button when clicked will call the button mode function with 1 2 3 as parameters respectively then in the nested for loop i will create 400 buttons here count variable is used for naming the variable and providing unique parameter to each button every button created is stored in the button list list when one of the button is clicked the button click function will be called with the parameter button number and one of the three if condition will run according to the supply mode the first if condition is for the starting point with supply mode equal to 1 and second if condition is for the obstacles when supply mode is equal to 2 and third if condition is for the destination when supply mode is equal to 3 when go button is clicked the solution function will be called a list name parent will store the parent list written from the backend function in the backend script after that a for loop will convert all the buttons color to blue color so this is how our path will be displayed when the restart button is clicked the restart function will be called this will destroy the root window and call the got function and this will restart the whole code when the level button is clicked the level tute function will be called and an already generated obstacle list will be converted to obstacles